Good morning, Illuminate. I'm not with you this morning because I'm in Kentucky. I performed a wedding for my brother Jordan and uh, had a good time doing that, but um, I am going to be bringing you the message just a little bit different. Uh, we're going to do it via video. And uh, so here's what I want to talk about this morning. Last week we talked about um, Jesus being our Savior, that He is the greatest gift that we could ever get. Opening presents during Christmas, that's fun, but man, the best Christmas uh, present of all, and, uh, and why we open uh, presents on Christmas is because we can remember the goodness of God through Jesus Christ. And this week, I want to talk to us about being uh, satisfied in Jesus. So we talked about the gift in Jesus, now we can talk about the satisfaction that we can find in Jesus. So, um, you know how as you have become an adult now, maybe um, you can remember, if you can, back to when you were a kid. And um, as a kid, um, I remember feeling like everything was perfect. Um, and actually, I'm bringing you um, a message this morning from a very special place uh, in my heart. Um, this area right here and, and everything behind me, that's where I grew up um, as a kid. Um, it's a trailer park, and, uh, and when I was a kid, I, I didn't fear anything. Um, I felt like everything in the world was perfect. I felt like I had everything, um, and as an adult now, I realize, you know, living here, my, my parents didn't have very much money growing up, but man, I didn't know that when I was a kid. I felt like we had everything. Um, I felt like I had plenty. I felt like I had fun every single day. I never worried about anything. I used to walk up and down this dirt road every single day, um, barefooted. I mean, you, you, I just, I had such a great time. I'd, I'd hang out in these woods right here. This was my territory, and it was such a big world in my head. And, you know, I would walk through these woods barefooted too, and I can't believe I would do something like that because now I'm, I'm terrified of snakes. But when I was a kid, I wasn't afraid of anything. I just I felt this freedom and this worry-free attitude. And sometimes as an adult, I wish I could feel like that. But I, somewhere along the line of when I was a kid to where I am now, um, I, I got a job. Um, I started to have bills. I got a wife. I got kids. I got sick one time. And now things as an adult, I feel differently now. And I just wish sometimes I could go back believing that everything was all right, that everything was just perfect, that I was satisfied with my life like I was when I used to live here in this trailer park. And maybe if you're like me, you feel the same way. You've gotten a little bit older now and you're more aware of the world around you and you're aware of the dangers that, that, that come with this world. And, and look, it can feel so heavy, but wouldn't it be cool if you could just go back to thinking, still be an adult, still be an adult, but if you could just go back to thinking like you did when you were a kid, just that carefree happiness where you felt like the world was awesome. I wish I could think like that as an adult. Well, here's the thing. Jesus wants us to know that we can feel like that, but we're not gonna find that feeling in the world around us. We're going to find that in Him. And so this morning, I want us to turn in our Bibles to Colossians, and we're going to see how Jesus shows us that we can have complete satisfaction in Him. And we can live a worry-free life, a fear-free life through Jesus and so I want us to take a look at Colossians in chapter number one. We're going to start in verse number 15. And God's going to tell us a little bit about Jesus. And I want you to see the pattern. We're going to read just a few verses here. But, but notice the pattern. Everything is under Jesus. Life is under Jesus. Under the umbrella of Jesus is where we can find the true satisfaction in life. Where we're, we're, we, we don't have to be afraid anymore. We don't have to worry even though we do, but we don't have to. Everything has to be under the umbrella of Jesus. So take a look with me in Colossians 1, beginning in verse 15. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. 
for by him all things were created. So Jesus created everything. He's the image of God, but he also created everything in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things. And in him, all things hold together. The way you live, the ground you walk on, the job you have, the family you have, all things were created by him, for him, and it, it, it even consists because of him. Everything is under the umbrella of Jesus. And he is the head, verse 18, and he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. He is ruler of all. He's created it all. It's all for him, and it's all held together by him. For in him, verse 19, for in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. God said, I can make something with a life on earth. I can be a physical man and dwell in a physical body, live a sinless life, care for people, love for people, uh, make it through this life with purpose and be totally joyfully satisfied. Jesus was able to do that so that he could show us that we can experience the same fullness of life just as he is. And then verse number 20, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. And that's the ticket. Look, I'm telling you, you can search and search and search for something in life to fill you, to make you uh, satisfied somehow. You can look for it in riches. You can look for it in fame. You can look for it in social status. You can look for it in substances. You can look for it in sex. You can look for it in finances. You can look all over the place to feel something inside of you that feels empty, but you'll never succeed in doing that because here's the reason why. That space you're trying to fill, it's a place that God created for himself. And as you fill it with things that he's already created, you'll find out that it will fail you time and time again. But Jesus wants you to know, it's me you're looking for. Find the satisfaction in me and you can experience the freedom that Christ brings with a life that's living in him. And in one more verse, I want to read you Colossians chapter 3 and verse number 4. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Christ, who is your life. Jesus Christ has to be your life. Well, what does that mean, Brandon? That sounds pretty cliche, right? What does it mean to make Christ your life? You live under the umbrella of Jesus. Everything you do goes through the filter of Jesus. So what kind of a job do you want to have? Well, what kind of a job will allow me to live in the fullness of life that God has created for me? What kind of a job can I have that will still allow me to live and benefit the kingdom of God? Whether it comes to a spouse or a partner in life, you say, look, um, I want to be with someone that I love and loves me, but is this someone who can love Jesus too? Thinking every way you think, through the filter and under the umbrella of Jesus will transform your life. And I'm telling you, God's telling us, you will be happier through that lens. And so, as much as I miss being a kid, I'm glad I'm an adult now. But as an adult... I hope that I can almost live with a naivety in my faith like I used to live when I was a kid. Just a worry-free attitude, knowing that Jesus is in total control and that Jesus loves me and that Jesus 
is watching over me and he's protecting me and he knows every breath that I'm going to take and he knows the last one I'm going to take and knowing that he will provide every single thing that I need in him that he wants to be my satisfaction and that he is offering full satisfaction in him but I think that I needed to read this verse so I can be reminded that I can have that but I have to view life through the umbrella of Jesus. And look, I know it's hard to do that. And you know it too. It's, it's hard to wake up every day. And if you've had a bad day the day before, you wake up the next morning. Look, it's tough to go into work sometimes to look someone in, in the face that you don't like to look at. Um, it's tough to come home to a family that is broken right now. It's tough to come um, to, to go through life looking at your bank account over and over again. We are barely on the line. I know how that feels, and I know that it can be tough for all of us. But Jesus wants us to know, I bring full satisfaction beyond all of those things. Start looking at those things through the lens of Christ. You're having a, tr you're having a hard time with your kids? Start talking to me about your kids. You're having a tough time with your finances? Start talking to me about your finances. You're having a tough time with your spouse? Start talking to me about your spouse. And look, I know that we... In, in this American culture, we like taking a pill when we get sick. We take some NyQuil. We feel better the next day. But when it comes to life issues that take like longer than just an overnight pill, it actually takes some time sometimes. It could be a, a week, could be months, could be years. God's saying, stick with me through those times because I'm not going to leave you through those times. There's times where you feel like you're alone and God wants you to know I'm right here. He loves you. He's never going to leave you. And look, he is holding you together by his power. It's what we just read. All things were created by him, for him, and they consist because of him. Jesus is holding your life together and he is going to bring full satisfaction in your life. He's just asking you to lean into him and to see that it can be this life of worry-free, fear-free, you can live that life, and I want that for me too. I just have to remember that that possible feeling, it does exist. That feeling of when I used to walk through these streets barefooted, knowing that everything was okay. Loving life and just seeing life through a lens of happiness and joy. I want that every single day as an adult. And Jesus is telling us, you can. I bring full satisfaction. We just have to live under the umbrella of Jesus through every single aspect in our lives. So what is it that's in your life right now that's keeping you from living under the umbrella of Jesus. What's got a hold of you right now? What makes you worried? Think about that. Is it your spouse? Is it your partner? Is it your kids? Is it your finances? Is it your job? What is it that's got a hold of you right now where you think about, it's what you think about every single day. And Jesus is inviting you to talk to him about that. Not just today, but living a lifestyle of where you take that to him on a regular basis, a daily basis. Talk to God about your finances. Talk to God about your spouse. Talk to God about your kids, your job. He wants to know about all of those things. You know why? Because he created all those things. But he loves you. And he created all those things for him. And he also created you for him. You are his most precious possession. You are the crown jewel of his heart. That's why he died for you. He didn't die for money. He didn't die for um, a job. He didn't die for social status. He died for you and for me. So he must really care about us. Go to God and live through the lens of Jesus in every aspect of your life. And you will find true satisfaction through Jesus. I'm praying for you, church. I love you. And it's my heart and my hope that you can live and move forward 
with whatever it is that you're thinking about regularly that's worrying you, that you can live just like I was that little trailer park boy living up and down these streets with a worry-free, a fear-free, but a confidence knowing that Jesus, he's got your life under control. I hope that helps. Let's take a moment to bow our heads right now and close our eyes. And I want you to think about that thing right now. What is it that has a hold of your life? It's what you think about on a regular basis. It causes fear. It causes worry. It may cause discontentment. What is that thing? Could be more than one thing. But what is that? And I want you to talk to God about that right now. Say, God, I, I have a hard time trusting you right now with my kids. Lord, I have a really hard time trusting that you're going to provide for me. Lord, I'm having a really tough time understanding my boss or understanding a coworker or understanding my spouse. Whatever it is, fill in the blank, but you know what it is in your own heart. What is it that is just, it's got a grip on you. And Jesus wants you to know, you're never going to find any satisfaction in that. You'll find it in me. And if you look at those things through me, and you go to me about all those things, you'll start to see those things differently. Ask God to give you freedom from the worry over those things from the fear over those things, from the discontentment and the dissatisfaction that plagues your life right now. And ask him to let you see life through the lens of Jesus. I love you, church. Let's pray together now. Jesus, you see where every heart is right now. And you want to come into our lives and transform our perspectives. You want to transform our discontentment, our fear, our worry. You want to take all of those things away and fill that place with you. And so, Lord, I'm asking that you would do that for every individual who is, in, uh, who is listening to this right now. And, Lord, I pray that you would help us as a church to let go of some things that we're holding on to tightly and trust you with those things, God. I'm asking you to do a mighty work in every hearer this morning. It's in your mighty name I pray, Jesus. Amen. I love you, church. Hope you have a wonderful Sunday. I'm praying for you. I can't wait to see you back again next week. And um, hope you have a great day. I love you guys, and I'll turn it over to Ian. So thank you, Ian, for your hard work, for JoJo, for the worship team, for everybody who helped set up and tear down this morning. We couldn't do it without you. For all of our kids' workers, you guys make Illuminate special. Thank you. I love you guys. Have a great week. Adios.